what's up guys my name is luke and welcome back to motion and design sorry i missed last week uh, it was just kind of a busy week but i am back at it and yeah i just want to say thank you for 10,000 subscribers i'm not sure if you guys saw my previous video but i did a little 10k video it's just a 30 second animation with a bunch of simulations around 10k and yeah i put a bunch of them up for free on my patreon and then some other ones that are for my patreons so i think it's for free and then for for the patrons with eight in total so yeah if you haven't checked that out already there's some free project files over there if you guys want to download them uh but yeah let's get on to today's tutorial so i don't know about you guys but microsoft is one of my biggest inspirations when it comes to creating motion graphics they just have such a clean and unique style especially nowadays they're new uh like marketing team and the new studios that they hire to do their content for them it's just it's peak uh, so yeah, I saw one of their latest adverts. I think it was for one of their keyboards. It wasn't uh, directly Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, it was Buck Design who did it, which is one of like the biggest guys in the industry. One of that studio. Uh, yeah, and they did some really cool effects. And they did this one effect where they had a cloth surface, and there was a keyboard that was like it looked like it was kind of like typing on the cloth surface. And yeah, I thought I would try to recreate that, seeing as though I was doing a bunch of stuff around club animations. So yeah, if you like this type of content, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you're interested in project files and some other tutorials, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. But yeah, let's get straight into it. So let's start off by creating our fake keyboard. So we're going to do that by using a cloner. Let's just go over here and grab a cube. Let's change this to 10 by 10 by 10 with a fillet over here and let's set the fillet to a radius of 1. So we have this cube with these nice beveled edges. Then let's create another cube and this is going to be our shift key and let's make this maybe 10 in the oh, 20 in the X and then one more and let's set this to maybe 50. So we got a let's just call these key shift and space bar so if we had to throw this key into our clone over here let's keep it on grid let's change this to like 20 by 20 by 20 and let's increase this to something like seven so i'm not going to do a full-on proper keyboard as that's not really what we're trying to do but if you want to the same technique should work you just might need to spend a little bit more time with it so as you can see we have all these cubes in this cloner over here if we had to throw the shift in it you'll see that what happens is that we get a cube shift cube shift and you know it goes on like that same if we had to add in our space bar over here that we get each of these it might look like we're missing something over here but if we had to go let's go ng for lines you'll see that we are getting these other ones over here so it is still one two three one two three one two three so how do we get it that we're able to actually, you know, control this a little bit more? So maybe there's a better way of doing it, but the best way that I've found is just to manually change up the spacing of these. So let me show you what I mean. So if we had to go key key, let's go over here like that. So now what we're getting is we're still getting this pattern. So now we're getting four keys and one shift. So one, two, three, four, one. So here one. Two, three, four, and we're getting these blank spaces over here because of our space bar. If we had to show that, that's where that would be. Cool. So I went beforehand and just kind of wrote down what I needed to do. So it is this. Let's add. So if you want there to be gaps in between, all you need to do is add a null, and now you'll see that we're filling out those gaps. Okay, so that's kind of the look that we're going for. for now. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you get the idea. You just kind of need to move these around to get the kind of placement that you want. Cool, so we want this to now type. So you can either go and manually animate this, but who has time for that? Let's go over here and use some MoGraph. So let's go and add in a shader effector. Shader over here, let's change the parameter from scale to position. And let's set this to about a position of like 15. 15 should be good. Then in our shading tab, let's go and add a noise. Let's change our scale to about 200. And let's bring up our low clip over here and our high clip. 
so what we're doing over here is we can see over here in the noise we want uh, big uh, splotches of white and big splotches of black which means there's going to be 100% and 0% uh, on the effects up here. Cool and then let's set an animation speed of 1. And let's see what that looks like if we have to press play. And now look at that, we have our own little typing keyboard and you can see what sort of effect we're going to get just by putting a plane over here and looking over here. So if you don't like the specific one, we can go over here and just change the seed. And now we can get a bunch of variety with the type of looks that we're getting. You can also change up the noise, but uh, for what I was trying to do, just the normal noise worked perfectly. Cool, so now let's get into the actual cloth simulation of it. So uh, before we actually start, if we had to simulate it right now, the cloth will be interacting with these. So let's just set a keyframe up here. Let's bring this up, something like that. And then let's go over here and just bring this down to about like zero. So also it starts there and then goes into it. So let's go over here with our plane. Let's set this to 200 by 200 with a width segment of 300 and a height of 300. So we want quite a lot of polygons over here because we want quite a high detailed uh, sim. But luckily with the new cloth engine, it can run this really easily and actually quite fast. Cool. So in A to get rid of the lines. And let's go over here and add in a cloth tag. Let's go into Command D and just turn off our gravity. So if we had to press play now, just take a second to load, but nothing's going to happen. So let's go over here onto our cloner and add a collider tag. Let's turn off the bounce because we don't really want bounce and let's play again. And let's hide that. And look at that, we get this really cool effect. It's definitely not the effect that we're going for, but this is a super cool <laughs> effect. I'm sure you can mess around with it, especially if you had to pin all these areas over here, you could get a really cool result. So how do we get it that when the buttons push, it doesn't make the entire cloth ripple? So there are two ways we can do this. So I did a few different animations uh, like this, and I used a different effect for each of them. So for the one, I wanted it that in the beginning, they, you know, just collided with it, but then after a certain amount of time, then it kind of rippled out. So how I did that originally was by using a drag force, uh, sorry, friction force. If you had to set this to something like 100, I think that's enough. Uh, nope, maybe a thousand. maybe 10,000. Yeah, okay, so 10,000 I think is a good one to put it at. So now it does go in and it kind of goes back to its original results, I mean, maybe even 100,000. Um, yeah, so this way they do pop up. It is a little bit slower, but you can get a different effect by doing it this way. Uh, the reason I did it this way is so that I could then animate a spherical field over here to go. Let me just show you what I mean. And then to go to like 100%. So that in the beginning, when they first go in, actually, hold on, I need to change our remapping. Let's go again to invert. So that when the keys initially push, they work fine. But then once the spherical field happens, then they kind of ripple out. Uh, yeah, that was the effect that I was looking for. But I don't think that will work really well for this specific effect because we want the keyboards to kind of feel like a keyboard that's pushing in and then coming back out again. So how do we do that? It is actually pretty simple. If we go over here into the mix animation, all we need to do is turn on with force. You don't even need to change the strength. If you just set it at one, let's see what happens. It pushes in and comes straight back out and gives us this nice little ripple as well. How cool is that? If you want it to be a little bit uh, like more, I guess, tight, you could call it, I guess uh, we can set this to two and then it will revert back a lot quicker and more um, accurately. But I think for now, one is perfect. You can get some more, uh, I don't know, better results. Sorry about that. Uh, if we have to change up here in our surface, let's change this to 500 and 500 on the stretchiness. 
and now when these buttons click in we get this more nice like kind of ripply effect and also it goes back to its original results a lot quicker which I thought looked really nice I think that's the res the I think that's the settings that I use for my render Cool, so this is only half of it. We wanted that when they actually push in, it changes the texture over here. So how can we do that? Let's go and add a vertex map. So in our vertex map, let's drop our cloner and let's use a point object. Let's change our mode from points to surface and change the radius to about two centimeters. We only want that as it's intersecting that it's able to affect, but all the ones that aren't, we don't get at all the effect. Cool. So let's go and open up Redshift. If you don't have Redshift, if you're using Octane, the exact same thing will apply. All it is is just using a vertex attribute or in Octane, it's a vertex map. It's the exact same thing. So yeah, feel free to follow along. Cool, let's open up our Redshift view. And let's go in and add a material. In our material, let's create another material, double click and let's search for a blender, material blender, drop this into color one, that into color two, into the surface over here and then let's search for vertex attribute. Let's drop our vertex attribute into our blend color and in the vertex attribute let's drag in our vertex map. Cool, so if we had to just change this to something like red, we should be able to see exactly what's happening. And look at that, that is super cool. So I'm not gonna go too much into the texturing because I am providing like the project file for my Patreons, but I'll show you just like a basics of how I got a similar result. So let's go in and add a, actually before we do that, let's just add in an HDRI. Actually, let's just do a sun sky, it's a little bit quicker. Uh, so like that's where you get some shadows cool so let's search for a tile let's plug this into our color over here just sort of that it changes us to something like weave and we can leave those for now. I'm gonna spend too much time. Let's go 0 0.05. Maybe 0 0.01. Something like that. Then let's go over here, add a bump. Try this into our bump map. And if we could take this out of the color, because we don't really want it in the color, we just want it to kind of look as if it's made out of fabric. And this weave pattern gives a kind of fabric look to it. Let's change our color over here. Let's do maybe like uh, some like that should be fine. It's not the most appealing color, is it? But it's okay. I mean, this is just for test purposes. You guys can always change up the colors and stuff. Actually, no, I hate it. <laughs> Let's make it like a light blue. Something like that. Cool, and now we have this kind of textured pattern over here with a red over here, but the red does not look nice. So let's go over here and add in a noise. Maximum noise. Let's drop that into our color over here. Let's just solo that. Let's change this to maybe something like stopple. Uh, let's change maybe, actually the overall scale is fine. And let's just add a little bit of animation speed. Cool, so now we get this kind of look over here. Let's go and add a ramp. Let's plug our ramp into here. Let's go into load presets. And let's choose something like this. And let's just go over here into interpolation and change this to smooth. And now we get this cool result. So I think we can actually get a cooler result if we add some glow to this. So all we need to do is set this to like an emission of, oh, nope, that's the wrong one. Let's go over here, add an emission of like 0.5, something like that. 
and let's just put this into our mission and color cool something like that looks cool and let's just turn down or up the roughness a bit uh, so you might want it that you know this fabric also applies in here we can do that just by plugging in our bump map into this bump map and then you should get the material to carry over and now we get a pretty cool result and then just with some better lighting I mean I think for my scene it was pretty simple I think it was just like a dome light that was set quite low with a area light set to about 20 by 20 something like that something like that move that to the side and just bring down our spread and let's just make this a little bit wider bring down the spread a little bit more bring down the intensity and let's maybe just bring up the yeah okay it's not the most beautiful result but i feel like you guys get the idea and yeah that is it for the tutorial i really hope you enjoyed it and if you're interested in the project files i think i have three of the project files that i'm going to be uploading it's going to be the key ones obviously with better lighting and better texturing i'm sure you saw in the beginning of the video i've got another one that kind of uh, does this ripple and then another one that uses the more uh friction uh effector that i showed in the beginning so yeah i really hope you enjoyed this if you're interested in the project files the patrons in the bio and if you like this style of content please consider liking and subscribing but yeah i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys next week peace